mutual beneficial beneficial to one another. We always, you know, talk about getting better. We always talk about growing. And if you know him, you know he's a character. Uh, man, you know, I just love having a relationship with this guy. But uh, he's a $300,000 earner, uh, near-term national sales director. He's just kicking butt and taking names. Give it up for the one and only Terrell Knighton. <laughs> You, man, you're not hungry. You don't want it. I mean, you got to want it. You gotta, I don't care about it. Man, just block it all out. Man, tell me what I got to do to be somebody. Tell me what I got to do to win. I mean, you got to be hungry. I mean, how many of us are really, really hungry? You know, you see a lot of people in this country, they come into this country because they've come from a place where there's no opportunity. My pastor, Jamaican, he said, y'all complained about traffic. You got four or five lanes on each side. Y'all don't even know what to complain about. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'm Terrell Knight. <laughs> Good afternoon. So glad to be here. I want to start by thanking James Watkins. This guy is a visionary. Uh, he does such an incredible job. Knows how to treat people. Does everything first class. You know, he prints tickets up in color. I mean, he just takes the game to a whole other level. You know, he goes and spends money to get a, a some type of billboard poster thing to put in the office with the speaker's pictures on it. The guy does everything first class. So I want to thank James. Um, I want to thank um, everybody in the DFW Builders Club, Keith Chappelle, Fabiola, Dustin, uh, Shanika, all my great friends. I want to thank you guys. I want to thank my wife. I want to thank my team on the next level. Yeah, that's what's up. I want to thank God because God is good. Yeah. And he has really, really blessed us. But one of the things I want to talk to you guys about today is how to use a mentor. Because you come into this business and you want to be successful and you want to win. And the beautiful thing about Primerica is that you get somebody, you're in business for yourself, but you're not in business by yourself. Right. And so I want to talk to you about that because I feel like people need to, they need to understand what they need to do to utilize their mentor. Okay? So I want to talk to you about that and I want to talk to you a little bit about your thinking. So let's take a look at the definition of mentor. It is an experienced and trusted advisor an experienced and trusted advisor. Can I get a witness? Experienced and trusted advisor. Well, won't he do it? Okay, good. All right. Uh, advice or trainer, someone, especially a younger, to a younger colleague, right? Um, uh, Webster says, a trusted counselor or guide, someone who teaches or gives help and advice to a less experienced and often younger person. Right? right? And so what I found in researching the word mentor is the word trust. Mm -hmm. That's what I found. I found the word trust. So when you come into business, you got to trust your leadership. Right. You got to trust your RVP. You know as much as you can trust somebody. You know what I mean? But you got to trust that these people have your best interest in mind. So when you say, well, I got this guy with diabetes, and uh, he's in remission from cancer, but it's a $170 app. And your upline says, we can't take that app. You got to trust that they're not trying to hurt you, they're trying to help you. Right. Because that's what you call a chargeback. Right? <laughs> Can I get a witness on the chargeback? Okay, I got some witnesses. All right, very good. So, again, you have to trust the people that you're in business with. You can't be a choosy Susie or a looky loo. Well, what do you mean, Gerald? Well, a choosy Susie is you want to choose to go get advice from people going to tell you what you want to hear. Right. They're going to tell you what you want to hear. But it, what, what it's going to take for you to win, you probably don't want to hear. Right. And I tell my people all the time, you're going to listen to somebody. You're going to listen to me, or you're going to listen to your boss, but you're going to listen to somebody. There's no in the middle. Right. Right. You're going to listen to somebody. You're going to listen. If you don't listen to your upline, you don't listen to your coaches, then you're going to find yourself in a situation where you're going to be back on the job, and they're going to say, we got mandatory overtime this weekend. You're going to say, okay, okay. boss. That's right. <laughs> see, I see people go around asking everybody for advice because you're looking for something other than work. You're looking for the easy. There is no easy way. Right. There is no easy way. you gotta, you got to do what you got to do. Right? right? You can't make excuses. Uh, you got to do what the mentor tells you to do. That's right. So you want to win. Your coach tells you. You need to have eight appointments a week. 
to have eight appointments, you probably need to schedule 12 or 16. And so then you say, well, I'm going to go talk to Key Chappelle and see if he says something different. Well, I'm going to talk to Tony Stevens and see if he says something different. Shout out to my upline, Tony Stevens. <laughs> Changed my life. Right? Shout out. But uh, we're always looking for, some, for a different answer. Somebody tell you an easier way or a quicker way. But when they give you advice, you've got to follow the advice. You've got to do it. The Bible says, I'll put the word on it, with a buckle of the Bible belt. With a buckle of the Bible belt. Where my saved people at? Where you at? Where you at? Okay, only like three heathens over there. Very good. Okay, good. James 1.22 says, be ye a doer of the word and not a hearer only. So you're going to have your coach tell you what to do, and then you want to go look somewhere else and find a different answer? Well, I, I'm going to go talk to this RVP or that RVP. Look, let me tell you something. You don't get to choose your parents, and you don't get to choose your RVP. Right? You got to bloom where your dad gum plants. If God gave you that coach, that's your coach. Right. And you got to bloom where you plant. I talked to Sam Shepard. He said, I've seen people win with good uplines, and I've seen people win with bad uplines. The bottom line is, do you want to win? See, the world is going to change. Your world is going to change from the inside out. Your world's not going to change from the outside in. See, when you get better, it gets better. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, so we talked a little bit about the power of the mind, okay? We're going to talk a little bit about the power of the mind. Because whatsoever you desire, whatever the mind can, can conceive, the body can achieve. And so what happens is your world basically at this point is a sum total of your thinking. That's right. See, your best thinking got you to where you are right now. Your best thinking. That's right. And for you to go to the next level, you need somebody else's thinking. Right. See, you need your coach's thinking. And you need to tap into your mentor every single day. I remember talking to Sheila when she was driving to work. She's full time now. And I said, Sheila, 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 just stop, stop, stop it. You're overthinking it. No, come back here. She said, oh, this little man just talked to me. <laughs> she get on the phone with Deborah. This little man is TK, TK. <laughs> right? You got to talk to your mentor every day. Man, there was a time when me and Tony were inseparable. We were, this before cell phones and all that stuff, me and Tony would be together all day running around trying to do Primerica, and we'd get home and talk on the phone to the wee hours of the night. We were constantly in contact, sell each other dreams, resell each other the dream, right? You got to, I mean, somebody, you got to, some of you are my guys, I got to find them. Like, man, anybody seen Johnny? You got to find, you should, your RVP shouldn't have to find you. Man, when you get somebody that starts calling you on a regular basis, you say, that gum, I got one. Man, I got one. Hey, coach, how, this is what I got going on today. I got an appointment. Uh, hey, can you help me with this one? Can we do a church meeting? Man, that's what you're looking for. You got to be tapping into your leader every single day. They shouldn't have to find you. Man, if you got a job, call them on the way to work. What's up, coach? Man, I'm headed to the slave, but I got two appointments set up tonight. You know, just touching base. Just touching base because it's like a ship. See, you're going through life. And, and then, then, you know, well, I got something at church. And so you go a little bit this way. And then, uh, well, I got something with the kids. And go a little bit. But you're talking to your coach. Boy, they keep you on course. It's like, it's like they're, 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 they're doing this right here, keeping you on course. But you got to be connected. That's right. right. See, if, if you're not plugged in, there's no power. Right. If you're not plugged in, there is no power. You got to be plugged in constantly, right. every day. Two, three, four, five times a day. You've got to be talking to your upline and your leader if you want to be successful so they can help you with your thinking. So let's take a look at it like this. I grew up with my parents. My parents are dead, dead. My parents are broke. All right? Thank God they got me, right? Amen. Okay, so I've been taught by people that are not wealthy all my life. Mm -hmm. So I have no foundation for creating wealth and no foundation for being in business. Right. Now, you've got 20 years of that, 30 years of that ever how many years old you are, of being around broke people, right? right. right. Of being around broke people. So you got to get around some people that have some means right. to begin to affect your thinking. Right. You know, they pass the tax reform. We're not going to be political. But, you know, people that make money, it, it's, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool if you're making some money. Right. Right. Especially if you're making a lot of money. Hey, it's cool, right? right. Broke people complain. Well, there, there's only two people in this in this country, rich people and poor people. Middle class is an illusion. They tell you that to make you feel good about not having a real net worth. I'll repeat that. 
that, that gets some of y'all. They call you middle class so you can feel good about having no real net worth. That, that's all, it's an illusion. Because I see middle class people have to retire on 60% of what they were already not doing that great on. Right. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Is there one? All right. Okay, good. So your thoughts affect what happens to you. So you have to constantly guard your thoughts. The Bible said bring every thought under the, in the subjection of the Lordship of Christ. Bring every thought. Right? Because if you do that, you're going to stay on the right path. But you got to bring those thoughts into captivity. you got to do it. So again, the, what, what's the, the inner world, your thoughts are affecting your outer world. That's right. That's right. So you recruit people you can't keep them? It's you. Yeah. That's right. It's your thinking. It's something inside of you that's causing people to go away. Mm. Oh, it got quiet. <laughs> I know I'm preaching. It's okay. I say amen. Amen. I say amen. amen. I know I'm preaching. That's all right. It's okay. I know I'm preaching. So, so... Yeah, all right, I know. So again, you've got to constantly be thinking about what you're thinking about. You got what you focus on is what you're going to attract. So if you're focused on getting some new wonderful people like like Art and Denise, you'll attract new and wonderful people. If you run around thinking, man, don't nobody want to do it. Oh man, it's just tough. Man, it's gonna be tough, and ain't nobody gonna want to do it. It's all coming from you. As I said before, you're going to change your world from the inside out. You're not going to change your world from the outside in. And everybody thinks the wrong way. They think it's this diet or that diet. you got to change how you feel about food to lose some weight. you got to change how you feel about health. you got to develop a new belief in order to have some lasting change. But it's thought that creates it. A new life is but a new mind. You want to change your life? Change your mind. You want to change your life? Change your mind. You've got to get around people that are going to pour belief in you, that are going to pour encouragement in you, that are going to tell you how great you are and that you can do it. You know why? Because on the job, they say, you know what, well, you've been doing pretty good on the review, but, you know, we got to, you know, this here, this productivity is a little off. You know, there's so much negativity in the world, you know? So much negativity. Everybody's telling you what you're not going to do, what you're not going to be, what you can't be. But then you call James and say, oh, man, Don, you're going to close that deal, man. You ain't nothing but a double stud, man. That's amazing what you did. And Don's like, boy, thanks, thanks, James. I'm amazing, right? You should be calling that every day, three, four, five times a day. Man, Sean, you ain't nothing but a double stud. You're going to get it done this month. Man, you qualified again. I told you you was going to win, right? You don't want to tap into that as often as possible, right? You... Again, a new life is but a new mind. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to wrap up. If you want real change, you got to desire real change, and you've got to get around people that are going to support your belief, people that are going to support your dream. It's not going to be your family, and it's not going to be your friends. Right? See, if you got four friends that smoke crack, <laughs> Four friends that smoke crack. What's gonna happen is you're gonna have a bad day, you're gonna hit the pipe, and now you're crack. Oh. <laughs> See now had you not been hanging around the crack is probably a pink crack. But you're freak of crack is. Now we laughing, but you got broke friends too, right? You got four broke friends. Talking about the cowboys. <laughs> Right? Talking about the Mavericks. Why the Rangers should have won instead of the Houston Astros. Right? Politics, which you really don't have a lot of control over. Put a lot of energy in that. And, and again, you've got to surround yourself with people. Different set of people. That are going to incur, that are going in the direction you want to go in. Association brings about assimilation. Put your, I'm sitting next to Danny tomorrow. And I just know some of that million dollar, 300, 500,000, I just, I just feel some of it just oozing on me. Like I, just, I just feel like a damn moisture over this side. I just feel it just, you know, with me. I just I feel like I'm absorbing some of it, right? See, what happens in life, there's levels. And you at this level right now, and these are all your broke friends right here, and it's you, okay? And so 
you start to succeed and you move up a little, and you move up a little, and then you move up a little. But you know, when you get to this level, well, there's new friends. Right. You know, that can go on the trip with you. Right. Not hate on you. Right. They can join that. Right. right? Yeah. So these people, you can always go down and say, hey, what's up? Yeah. Right? You can always do that. You can always jump down and holler at the little people. You can always do that. They're not going anywhere. They'll be there. They're not going anywhere. Trust me, they'll be here. So you move up in life, you develop new friends, you got your old bro friends, but you know when you go visit the old bro friends, it just ain't the same no more. Nope. Because they ain't talking about nothing. And they will never talk about nothing. Y'all have to do that. Thank you.